Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Beard Brigade Never-Ending Talk to the Beard GRL Extravaganza. I need a new intro for that. So <laughs> this man with me, you, you don't need any. Everybody knows Andrew. Um, you're as much a part of this group <laughs> as I am at this point. Um, but the first thing, I w- thanks for coming on, dude. I appreciate oh, it. Oh, dude, um, this yeah, is going to be fun. Yeah, we did the live uh, reading yesterday down in the lobby. And mm-hmm. I before anybody, so yes, that is their fireman on Andrew's shirt. This is, if you've never been to a convention like this before and, and experienced Andrew Gray in person, it's a force of nature. And so he has a fireman's shirt that he wears, and then he has a tablecloth that matches the fireman's shirt. Yeah, it's construction, guys. Yeah. So he lays out the, you know, because you're an author, so you set up a table and you get your books for sale. And all that. So he's got this tablecloth of naked dudes on there. Then this fireman. Now I noticed... I flew with you to Amsterdam. You were not wearing that shirt in the airport, if I remember correctly. Um, no, no, but in the I came through the lobby, and you know there's so there's that there's the minister convention here too. <laughs> and there's all these guys in the black cassocks, and they looked at me oh. as I got on the elevator, and I wanted to turn back and just say, nice drag, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I don't think I've told the crowd at home about this yet. So yeah, it couldn't have been set up better. There is a Greek Orthodox priest <laughs> convention in our hotel Hell. running at the same time, concurrent with GRL. Uh-huh. It's fantastic. So so yes, there's these two men in black cassocks, cassocks with long beards. You know, it's like nice drag. Come on, they're men in dresses. Please, it's just drag. That's what I thought. I thought they were cosplaying at first. That's a- no, no, <laughs> nope. It's uh, a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, minister, priest, laity sort of convention. At least that's what one of the signs said. You can't make this shit up. Nope. You can't make this shit up. <laughs> it's fantastic. But also they've been like the nicest guys. Uh, I've been in elevators with them. And, um, last night, no, it's the first night, Tuesday night, going to Wednesday or whatever day it is. I don't know. So I was downstairs having dinner with a bunch mm-hmm. of, uh, a bunch of the, the, the readers and, um, and they were, they were like, what's that word? They were shipping. They were shipping other. They were shipping a priest and the bartender. Yes, yes. And they're talking about this loudly because they're uh-huh. drunk too, which is hilarious to me. Um, <laughs> and the priest, they didn't even bat an eye. They didn't even look nope. over. They they were they're very nope. accommodating. I was on an elevator with a couple guys and one of the one of the priests in in the full garb, and I said I I said you know nineteenth floor please, and he says. Oh, 19, that was a great year. And I, before I could even think about it, I said, yeah, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> and he laughed. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Me and my big mouth. It's, yes. It's, John, it's one of those moments when you just want to say bananas. <laughs> If anybody hasn't watched that video from yesterday, you should probably watch oh, it. Yes. Andrew well, was talking about his apparently you dislike bananas. Yes, I hate bananas. I hate them with a passion. I hate the flavor. I hate the texture. And yes, John, just to answer your question, nobody likes limp bananas. Right. He was um I, I but would, bananas, I, as I was saying yesterday, bananas have one and only one usage, and that is sex ed class. Right. <laughs> We were trying to figure this out, too, because I didn't go to any fancy school with fe- sex ed or anything like that. So we were talking about the peeling of banana. And yeah, that. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully for one. No, Dom- we were just talking about the fact that, that no one wants limp bananas. Hopefully Dominic doesn't watch this. I'm sorry if you do, Dominic. It's my, it's my apologies. Um, I can't corrupt him. Trust me. <laughs> <It's> not- <laughs> My husband already knows. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it's that. He knows. Not happening. He now. knows. He knows. He knows. My husband has dealt with my weird food issues for twenty five years. He knows. He knows. Good Lord. Um, so, <laughs> I, I got a couple questions here. I know you've been self pubbing, um, and you've been yep. self pubbing now for coming on a year or somewhere in there. Yeah, actually, a year this month. So it's a year. Excellent. Yeah. Now, are you still pubbing some through the DSP? I'm. Brand? I'm still. I'm still. Every other month, I have a novel released through Dream Spinner, mm-hmm. and every other month, I have a self pub novella come out. That's fantastic. I also have a book coming out with Crazy Maple Publishing that will be a whole new venture. Okay. I don't know when, but I've got the contract, and I have some other, some possibly other books coming out that my agent is working on. So let's send let's send good thoughts and tell Source Books and Random House that yes, they want an Andrew Gray book. <laughs> so cra- Crazy Maple Publishing, this one is they're one new. I heard of. Okay. They they do the um, the serialization. They're also a company that they made their name in in some of those online games. 
Yeah. So they actually will, t- the plan is hopefully that they will take the book, which is called Hunks of the Month, and make it into an online game and video. <laughs> so that's what they do. Yes, imagine, imagine if you will, the garden club in my little town deciding that they're that that one of the ladies' idea is well, um, let's do one of those calendars like Calendar Girls only with guys, and the lady says, "But that's been done." The other one says, "Okay, then let's do a gay calendar." <laughs> so yes, they do a hunks of the month calendar. The, the little old ladies in the garden club do a hunks of the month calendar. Sometimes when I'm doing these, I, uh, sometimes when I'm like, I really, you have the, one of those, um, uh, and you may ask yourself, how did I get in this hotel room with Andrew Gray <laughs> talking about hunks of the month clubs? <laughs> like I, I have these moments where I'm like, how the fuck did I get here? Like <laughs> you got here because you be, okay. He got here. I got to tell you the story of how he got here. Uh, he got here because I put for dream spinner. I put a title up for audition on ACX. He auditioned. I hired him and that, and it's all goes from there. Yeah, you got to you got to start it. Well, it's just I just had Amy Lane up here, right? Um, mm-hmm. And I was telling her she was one of the first titles that uh, Nick J. Russo, who was working for me at the time, um, did. Yeah, that that was one of his huge jump out moments. Racing for the Sun. Um, was yes, one of the first was that one? Of- and yours was Inside Out for me. Yeah, exactly. That was maybe my second book I ever did. Um, yep, you you did those books, and you ended up doing them all. Uh, well, so I. Okay. You may not remember this, so I've told this story a number of times, but it's worth talking to the, the source here. So I, I went on ACX, and I auditioned for, for uh, a book through Dream Spinner. Um, you contacted me back and said, yes, we'll take it. Um, and I said, no, 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 no. You have like 50 books up. I'd, I'd, I'd like a shot at all 50. And next thing you know, you said, okay. And you- I, I said, yes, I said, okay, we're going to do this. Let's make out a schedule for the next year. Precisely. What, you, what he didn't know was the reason we did that was because ACX was about to change their contract rate from 50% to 40%. <laughs> and as long as we got the contracts done by Monday, we got the old rate, which is why you had done such good work and were reliable yeah. that we contracted those books out so far. Because, And that's also why even when you got behind, yeah. we never touched those contracts wow. because they were worth more money. That's amazing. Well, and yep. I, I experienced that where they were paying, uh, it was like 50 or 60%. They were paying watch. 50% yeah. to start with, and, and they then they went to, to 40. 40. And so, yeah, as long as they I were contracted before they before they did it, we got the 50% rate. So he, you did you did all the good fight books. Oh. You did all the, the inside out books. I contracted, oh, gobs of books. Well, yeah, because with, we- With Falcon. When and you said we, yes, then I was suddenly like, shit, what do I do? Because there were- 50 emails from ACX over with contracts. And I was like, motherfucker. So then I had to, I went, I started asking my friends, Hey, you got a pretty good voice. You, uh, yeah, you, you got any it? acting experience, you know? And I suddenly, I had a stable of actors working for me. That's how yeah. we started. Um, uh-huh. that's amazing though. I didn't think about that. Uh, the ACX jump from 50 to 40, cause I was affected by that. I wrote we all were. Share books out there. Absolutely. We all were. We all were. And so, yeah, that's why we contracted 50 books over a weekend <laughs> and we kept him busy for an entire year. Oh yeah, it was we, it was a good we year's worth of work. We figured it out a year, and it actually took about fifteen or sixteen months. But oh, I yeah. never touched those contracts. No, you guys we moved some around, but we had a we had a spreadsheet about who was going to do what book and when. I mean, it was I mean, crazy. It was all kinds of stuff. But yeah, well, it's one of those. Uh, you be careful what you wish for, because suddenly we were in business. <laughs> so, yeah, suddenly he was in business, and we were. Um, you were you were off and running. We were off and running. Mm-hmm. And away we went. DSP and, and you in particular, um, I've, I've got nothing bad to say about DSP, but my relationships with DSP are you, um, mm-hmm. specifically. You are who I've dealt with the entire time. And we wouldn't, Falcon Sound Company, which really, I guess I'm still a company. I have an LLC, but it's just John Solo now. That's all it is. Right. It could be John Solo LLC. But but it, but that doesn't mean that sometime down the road, you have, you have somebody else that wants to work for you and do them. It could be. Um, but you put us... You put us on the map. You helped us mm-hmm. get started. I will be forever grateful for it. Um, which, so that leads me to something else with the indie pub that you're doing now. Um, how's it working? How are I'm? It's, it's doing very well. It's a big jump. I'm really pleased. Well, it, it's, it's, um, it was and it wasn't because the books with the books with Dream Spinner are available in electronic and in, um, 
and in um, the, you know, the trade paperback, yeah. but they're also going to mass market paperback. Okay. So that means that the Dream Spinner books are a year out. So if I write it now, the one I'm writing now won't be out for some, and right now I'm working for early 20, I'm working on books for early 2023. That takes a while to get into that cycle because. So it took a while to get yeah. into that cycle. So the, um, the self-published books allowed the some income to keep coming in while that whole lead time was stretching out. Yeah. And they've done really well. They're fun. I enjoy them. Um, I have a book coming out on Tuesday. It's Nowhere to Run. It will be the third in the Nowhere to Ride series. Yep. I meant to tell you, too, we can do that video on Tuesday. Oh, so. excellent. We can Andrew do that will be back on Tuesday. Tuesday. We're going to read on yeah, Tuesday. The, uh, so we're going to read Nowhere to Run on Tuesday and... Coming Tuesday, Nowhere to Ride and Nowhere to Hide, the first two will, will be up on sale. So nice. they're going to go from, I think the first one's going to be 99 cents and the second one's going to be $1.99. So the reason I, I said that we could do that is because Jane's setting right there and she's the one that puts up the events yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, so, so you can put that up, Jane. In fact, you can put it in. Well, John, exactly. John, Jane does my group too. <laughs> How about that? It's a small you incestuous didn't know world, that. isn't it? When after after working with Jane in your group, I contacted Jane and she does my group too. <laughs> Jane, you're kind of a big deal. I mean, you're not as big of a deal as Melissa Grambling, but you're kind of a big deal. Well, she, no, <laughs> she, no, she's a big deal. You don't get to qualify it. That's mean. <laughs> yeah. Besides, we you know, as he told you, we went to Amsterdam together. We shared a room, so we slept together. I talk- So now with Jane, we've just got a menage a trois. I talked to Amy Lane about that. Um, I, I was talking to Amy specifically about sharing a room with you, and she confirmed one of my suspicions. You what? fucking snore. Well, so does she. <laughs> <laughs> when she wants to talk, she so does she. She, she did not say that she snored. She said you snore. That's what she, she snores, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you come by our if you come by our room and you hear stereo snoring, it's us. That's fantastic. And my husband says the same thing. Part of it is it's so humid here. Yeah. No, they, if it, if, no doubt. when it's dry, the snoring goes away. When it's humid, yeah, I snore. Yep. I take after my father. Dominic's already made me a doctor's appointment for when I get back. He's got to <laughs> do something. Wow. So uh, later later today, or for, first. I got to talk before we get to right after this tonight, you're going, you're uh, tomorrow night. You're going to the party, right? The uh, big shindig where we dance and all that. Um, oh, I will Saturday. probably be at the dance party. Yes. Are you going to do the sh- No, the take I, off no, the I am move? not. Come I am on. not. I am not. Everybody's I, got- I, did, I did it once. I've been talking this up for two years. <laughs> okay. I thought if I will do it, but I'll probably have a t-shirt on underneath. So it won't be the same. <laughs> I, I'll take it. I'll take what I get. <laughs> the, hey, but, these- but you have to request it's raining men. Uh, you know, I will. <laughs> <laughs> Certain, because that's the the thing. There's certain it's tra- raining there's men. Certain traditions. You've got to you've got to do YMCA. You've got to do in the navy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. We'll yep. we'll make sure one of those are on. I think I know the DJ, so I think we should be fine. Um. So the real question is, how well do you know the DJ? Not that well. He keeps that. <laughs> he keeps that. He keeps that dog between him and everybody else. He can't. Oh, it's Randy. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. Okay. I don't know. I haven't, well, I haven't talked to Randy. Well. But. <laughs> I think it was Atlanta when he DJed in a jock strap, and that was it. <laughs> wow, I, I missed that one. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep, yep. That's when Randy was younger. That's when we were all younger <laughs> and um, a little more stupid. <laughs> what, what What are you doing after this? Uh, I know you got you got a panel when I've got a panel doing? at two thirty. Okay. So after this, um, I have to go down and pick up all the stuff because Amy Amy had her had her author lounge after mine. So we just switched tables, but I left all my stuff behind Amy's table. Perfect. Friends are friends, man. <laughs> yeah. Friends are friends and pals are pals and buddies sleep together. Hey, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're done. <laughs> <laughs> my wife watches these. I mean, <laughs> hey, Jody, we love you. This is fantastic. <laughs> You are a force of nature, my friend. Um, so I, I uh, before we get off here, because I know you got panel student a lot of fun. No, stuff. I'm done. Um, um, I'm it, done till two thirty. You're Thank done. Goodness. Well, I'm, I'm going to get some lunch here in a second. Yeah, we, yes, we got a, yeah. a cardinal nation for lunch. Cardinal, la- what, what, what is that? Cardinal what is that? nation. It's in the um, it's in the ballpark village just across the way. It was really good. Amy, Amy, Amy loved the fried pickles. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> if we can do it quick, I got to be back here by two, but I think we can pull it off. Yeah. So we can do that. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, uh, we're having conversations about lunch and I know y'all are watching here, but, um, thank you for coming on. I appreciate this. Yeah. Well, I mean, lunch is important. Well, exactly. Well, I didn't get breakfast cause I had to go to, I went out to the Jeep to make coffee because Starbucks fucking sucks. So I went out and used my little propane stove and made coffee. <laughs> Yes. So I, I'm yes. redneck like He's that. in the middle of St. Louis and he's making coffee on a stove in the back of the truck. That's pretty much, yeah, that's, that was me though. And I was like looking around and I was like, nobody fucking cares. Like nobody, nobody, nobody cares. Nobody's going to say it. Come on. Thing. I have, it's been years since I've seen a downtown this deserted. Oh yeah. There is nobody here. We walked, we, um, Wednesday we walked over to CVS to get stuff for the, for the, panel this afternoon because mm-hmm. we got snacks and all kinds of stuff for the panel so nice snacks and drinks and everything i don't know if the hotel allows it but we're just not going to tell them Welcome. and um and we walked over to cbs and we probably saw eight people the entire 10 blocks we were walking over to cbs there was nobody out oh yeah it's dead uh, it's, no it's dead city well it's weird too because like in columbus it's not like this and columbus is freaking hopping so i'm not sure so is harrisburg and come on downtown carlisle is hopping and it's this itty bitty town but it's hopping more than this yeah i'm not sure what the difference is between uh st louis i guess it's because we're here well i think part of it is that they're still heavily into covid so there's still a lot of people working from home i mean i mean um at home in pennsylvania we have lots of people that are fully vaccinated that are doing this and the mask things are are less less yeah. restrictive because because it, it it's better here i think they're still in the grips of this and yeah. so people are just staying home well it makes for easy walking across to the parking garage to make my coffee easy walking <laughs> the park, and we went to the we went to the arch okay that was fun went to the top i've heard yeah, sandy it was fun sandy was telling me that that's a little trippy going to the top and it's well kinda- well you're in a pod you're not in an elevator you're in a pod because of the the, the curve of the arch so as you go up it eh, it, it just, yeah. it's, but it's not, it's not as it's going, it's just this light and then it just moves back. It's not a jerky motion at all. It's very fluid. It reminded me of going up in the Eiffel Tower because as you're going up, you can see all of the girder structure from the inside of the, of the arch. Okay. Which is like you go up and you go up in the Eiffel Tower, particularly you go up to the first landing and then you get out of the elevator. Then you have to take the, the elevator up to the very top mm-hmm. and you get into that elevator and what you see through the windows is all the girders. And then the girders start to disappear because it gets narrow and narrow. It's like, are we going to run out of tower? Wow. So are we, are we going to turn into Willy Wonka? Cause this thing keeps getting, keeps getting narrower and narrower. And you're like, Holy crap. <laughs> People have done it before me. They, they survived. Yes, people have done it before me. I'm not going to get claustrophobic. Just let me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, all right. Um, I'm going to have lunch. I love you, Fox. Thank you for hanging out. Andrew, thank you for coming on. I'm going to wave to the camera. Wave to the camera right there. We will see you all soon. At 2 o'clock, we have uh, Carolyn from uh, GRL. Uh, she is coming on. I think that's at 2. We do you have the schedule in front of us? Uh, you said it was two. I'm pretty sure it's two. Yeah, Carol's on it too. She's uh, one of the reps from GRL, so she can talk to us about the actual convention itself, and we will see you all then. Have a good night. 